The Azores is an archipelago consisting of nine volcanic islands some 1,400 kilometers to the west of Portugal, the country to which these islands now belong, as in 1427 the Portuguese explorer Diogo de Silvas was thought to be the first European to set foot on these islands. And in fact, not just the first European, he discovered that there was no one living there at all. And so it's thought that the first occupation of these islands occurred in the early 15th century with these Portuguese explorers. However, we do know that Europeans knew about these islands a little bit earlier, as on the Catalan Atlas from around 1375, we can see in the very western section of this beautiful piece that there are indeed several islands drawn onto this atlas where the Azores are known to be today. But what if some people knew about these islands far earlier than these Portuguese explorers? And what if these maritime people were none other than those famous seafaring Scandinavians, the Vikings. Well, today, let's find out more. Several studies into pollen core samples on the Azores have revealed a somewhat different picture about its inhabitant history. This is done because as particles form and reach the bottom of the ground, they make layers, and these layers are datable for archaeologists and can tell us about which plants, trees and animals were living there at the time. By then using a kind of drill or a bore, they are able to bore into these lakes and then to date certain layers and which plants and animals were around at certain points in time. As could be expected from the 15th century, we start to see that there are the pollen and other seeds, etc. of modern crops and planting, just as we would expect to see with the Portuguese arrival and the arrival of human agriculture. What's more interesting for this video, however, is that they went down further, and in the 9th century, they also saw a change that indicates human activity. In this 9th century layer, there was a sudden spike in an organic compound called 5-beta-stigmastanol. And this is very interesting because this compound is usually found in the fecal matter of ruminids. That being said in the layman's terms, sheep and cattle. And what's very interesting about sheep, if you've ever seen a sheep swim, is that you haven't seen a sheep swim because sheep cannot swim. And so we know that humans must have brought sheep here because they couldn't have swum there themselves, also because of the great distance to other large land masses where we know that cattle were being kept at the time. And so this suggests there were humans on the islands at this point in time. At the same time as we see this great spike in 5-beta-stigmastanol, we also see an increase in charcoal particles and a decrease in native tree pollens. This suggests that the people who were there were cutting down trees and then burning them, which is why we find more charcoal and fewer native tree pollens, because it suggests there is deforestation going on. This is likely actually related to the fact that there are now cattle and sheep walking around on the island, because of course this implies they were being kept for dairy production, and for dairy that means you can milk cattle twice a day, and if you're milking cattle you're putting milk dairy product into a bucket and you need to clean those buckets you have to clean milk buckets with boiling water and for boiling water you needed fire and so you can see there is a link between cutting down the trees also for the fields of course for cattle where they need grazing pasture and what's very interesting is that we see a similar pattern on Greenland when looking at core samples, which of course was an area which the Norse also settled. While this is a similarity with Norse Greenland, it's in fact a similarity with any cattle rearing culture. Their culture doesn't necessarily mean that they would be doing anything differently in raising cattle. And that raises the question, well, okay, so there are people in the 9th century, or from roughly 700 to 850 is when these samples are found in the colon core, but how do we know that these people were in fact the Norse? One idea put forward by writers of a recent paper on the subject is that the prevailing winds at the time, based on reconstructing the climatological conditions for the early Middle Ages, were coming from the northeast. And so if the Scandinavians were coming from Scandinavia, more likely stopping off in Ireland, where we know they had several bases, this could actually lead them directly onto the Azores if they were blown off course. 
At the same time, these currents they suggest would also make it less likely for explorers and mariners from the Iberian mainland, so Portugal and Spain, to find their way to those very same islands. Times have changed quite a bit since the Viking Age, and we can be fairly certain that the first thing those Norse explorers, if they did indeed reach the Azores, did was not to check if there were any Wi-Fi networks available. In fact, they might have been a bit shocked if they did. But today we know that we do. And today's video sponsor NordVPN can make sure that you are both more connected and safer when you're connecting to wireless networks when you're abroad or simply away from home. NordVPN has several great advantages. There are over 5,000 servers in 60 countries. It's available on Windows, Android, iOS, macOS, and Linux. NordVPN is also the fastest VPN out there and you can get access to all your favorite TV, movies, and games from abroad. There is also a special offer if you go to the description below or type nordvpn.com slash Hilbert and use the key code Hilbert, then you can get today's very special offer, which is a two year plan plus an additional month with a huge disc. So with NordVPN, be mobile, be safe and be connected. Another possible connection to the Norse is through DNA. Now, as I explained in the introduction to this video, when the Portuguese arrived, there were no people there. So it's not like they discovered a flourishing Viking settlement or post-Viking settlement that was there in the 15th century. However, there is DNA from another smaller source, and that is from mice. Because by looking at the DNA of mice, on the Azores, we can draw some interesting conclusions and possible hypotheses about their ancestry. Now, the kind of DNA that they looked at for this was mtDNA. This stands for mitochondrial DNA, which is passed on from the mother of the species in a long line back. There's a lot of genetic variation in mtDNA, and so a lot of the time you can tell where different groups are situated and where they move by studying the mtDNA of certain species like mice. And what's interesting with a group like mice is that mice are often transported and follow humans and human activity. What's interesting about a large part of the mitochondrial DNA found in house mice on the Azores is that it's very similar to that seen in species of house mice in the north of Europe, rather than those that are found in Portugal or the Iberian Peninsula at large, which is where we might expect have expected these mice to have come from if they had been brought there by Portuguese ships from the 15th century onwards. A further interesting note about mice and Vikings is that a certain type of house mice has been found for stretching from Orkney through to Caithness in the north of Scotland, the Hebrides, the Isle of Man and certain parts of Ireland where we know the Vikings were. And an interesting recent DNA study on house mice found in Iceland and further afield in Greenland, which we know were colonized by the Norse, have found very similar DNA to these house mice as well, suggesting that these mice were stowing away aboard Viking ships when they were exploring and settling new lands. And so the proposed theory goes that the same situation is happening on the Azores, that these mice came on board of these ships because of course ships had a lot of food on them they were storing grain for these large journeys they might be warm or good places to make nests and as we know mice breed very quickly and they might then have jumped off when reaching landfall this is then the idea of how these Scandinavian mice might have made their way to the Azores on board Viking ships and at the same time they jumped off on the Azores and therefore leave a kind of living evidence behind of the Vikings activity there. However, while this in evidence is incredibly interesting and compelling, it's not necessarily definitive because there was an awful lot of long distance trade going on at that time. Lots of ships from Scandinavia were indeed crossing the North Sea and going further afield to the Iberian Peninsula for trade, not only in the Viking Age, but also a little bit afterwards. And so it doesn't necessarily mean that there were ships from Scandinavia bringing Scandinavian mice. If we think about these large port towns where mice were probably jumping off and breeding and moving around, it's quite possible that they might have jumped aboard another ship and that that ship was then the one that brought them to the Azores. Although it is, as I say, a very interesting piece of evidence 
evidence. We do definitely know that there were Norsemen around Spain, around Portugal, Iberia, and North Africa, who might have been blown off course and reached the Azores. The first real raid that we get is in 844, although in various Arabic sources we also here have some kind of idea that they may have been around a little bit earlier, and we know that various Norse raiding parties made contact both with the Christian kingdoms in the very north of Spain around Asturias as well as with the Al-Andalus, the Moorish Muslim kingdom that had been established in much of the southern Iberian peninsula and with the Moors in North Africa as well. So it's quite possible that these guys might have been blown off course or had heard about these islands far to the west and gone to sea for themselves. But again, that is only speculation and circumstantial evidence. Do let me know in the comments below if you would like to see a video on the Viking Age in Spain and Portugal, because that is definitely Definitely something that I'd be interested in making a video on because it's not discussed that often here on YouTube. But the findings from these investigations are incredibly interesting and they might lead to us having a slightly different picture of Norse activity around the Iberian Peninsula going into the Mediterranean Sea and around North Africa as well. What's also interesting is that a similar DNA strain, which is likely from Scandinavia, is found on another island, which is also an autonomous community belonging to Portugal, a little bit to the south of the Azores, which is Madeira. And what's interesting is that in a later atlas from the 14th century, the Medici Atlas, these are referred to and they are named on this atlas as being in Latin the Insule de Corvis Marinis. And this translates to the Sea Raven Islands. Now, of course, Sea Raven for us evokes a kind of image of a Scandinavian. Of course, they were seafaring peoples. The Raven was an important figure for these Norsemen. And it has been connected to the idea that Norse mariners, when looking for land, would release two ravens up and that they would then go and fly to the nearest point of land and then come back, either with a, a twig in their mouth or something to show the Norsemen which way land was. They could then follow the ravens. The validity of these ideas has been called into question by various scholars, however. One point is that it is mentioned in Landnauma book, which is about Hrapna Floki, who is one of these Norse explorers in the discovery of Iceland, who then releases three ravens who then come out and the third one flies back with a twig in his mouth, and that's how he finds Iceland. The problem with this narrative, however, is that Landnauma book, the only copy that we have, which isn't an original copy, uh, but it's from the second part of the 13th century, so several centuries after the discovery of Iceland, and also that the people writing this down were Christians and there are several parallels made to famous Christian stories throughout Landnoma Bok and especially in the part about Rapna Floki as well and that actually the idea of sending ravens out to find land is really what Moses was doing in the Bible when he sent out the doves after the flood and we know that the writer of Landnoma Bok, a learned man, was also most likely a member of the church and therefore knew the Bible very well and wanted to portray his ancestors who came to Iceland in a similar light as the first Christians to create Iceland as a kind of Christian country. And so the validity of having Norsemen going round with ravens, which of course afterwards is strongly associated with the Vikings and so seems to fit in our minds, may not actually be based on accurate historical fact of Norse seafaring tactics. Another point raised on Twitter by Dr. Christian Koimans, who studies the Viking Age at Liverpool University, is that the term used Corvus Marinis in Latin often actually refers to the cormorant, not to a raven at all, which as you can see is a seabird and they are often found on the Azores. They often fly there and that's probably why, or, or Madeira in this case, and that's probably why they are being associated with it. I would just like to say that a lot of the information and the counter arguments to some of the claims made in these articles can be found in an excellent thread on Twitter that Dr. Christian Goimans has put up and that I will be linking in the description below. So a huge thank you to him. I also was in touch with him before this video to look at a few of these aspects. Incredibly interesting and I would highly recommend giving him a follow because he's always sharing interesting things. That does bring this video a little bit to the end. 
Let me know in the comments below, do you think that it's likely that the Norse made their way to the Azores and possibly to Madeira before the Portuguese got there in the 15th century? Or do you think it was someone else? And if so, who do you think it was? Let me know in the comments below, as I always love to hear your ideas and your feedback there. In the meantime, do check out NordVPN as well, the kind sponsor of this video, to make sure that you stay safe when you are online. And I do hope that you have enjoyed this topic. Let me know, as I've said several times now, and also make sure to check out my other videos on similar topics. I did quite a few videos on Norse exploration of places like Iceland, like Greenland, as well as mainland North America. And in the future, if you would like, then I will look at the Iberian Peninsula during the Viking Age, looking at some of the raids as well as the more peaceful connections between the Vikings and the trading in that part of the world as well. In the meantime, I have been Hilbert and this has been The History.